Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, November 24. The House of Representatives has extended the states of public emergency declared in seven police divisions last week until February 2022. They are the Tri-Parish Region of Westmoreland, St. James and Hanover, as well as St. Andrew South and Kingston Western, Central and Eastern in the corporate area. The House approved the measure during Tuesday's sitting. As he lobbied for the extension, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the SOEs were necessary to curtail the wanton killings by criminals and internal gang feuds. We have an emergency. We have criminals who are brazen and who are resourced. Madam Speaker, when we have a situation where an internationally sponsored peace training event is taking place in Westmoreland, and someone, a youngster, can walk into that training session in the open view of everyone and kill another youngster. Isn't that an emergency? Prime Minister Holness used the platform to refute claims that the SOEs were being used to give extraordinary powers to the military and limit the rights of persons. We went through every process to ensure that we train the police in human rights and I don't think that the country should be deprived of the use of these tools when they are clearly defined as to how they should be used and especially when it is clear that this government is making every effort to ensure that the rights of the citizens in other news, affordable, sustainable and climate resilient housing construction across the island will soon be bolstered. That's thanks to Tuesday's unveiling of the winners of the state's low-cost housing design competition. Over 300 designs were submitted for multifamily homes and one, two and three bedroom solutions. The winning designs in the four categories will be used to fast-track projects under the National Social Housing Program and other housing initiatives spearheaded by the government. I'm hoping that from this design competition and government building out these solutions right across Jamaica, we can then start to stimulate and inspire people who are building to change the way in which they are building. And that will have a, a signal effect right across the country. In the meantime, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is defending the National Housing Trust against what he terms as unfair criticism of the agency's mandate. There has been recent uproar about the pricing of the NHD's New Kingston development, for which units are on sale for between $27.7 and $37.7 million. In response, Mr. Holness argues that the agency has a duty to all contributors, not only those at the low to middle income level. He adds that the trust will be spending $57.7 billion on 8,500 units, 7,000 of which will be completed by March 31 next year. That represents about 80 units of 8,500 units, which are all targeted. We gave a directive to the NHT that 95% of their portfolio must be directed towards a price point eight million dollars and below and so the nhd has basically restructured its affairs to support the development of affordable and low-income housing but it does have an obligation still to contributors whether you are high-income or low-income contributors. Approximately 400,000 grades 1 to 13 students and 15,000 teachers in public schools are set to benefit from the newly launched National Coding in Schools program. Education Minister Fable Williams launched the program on Friday along with Prime Minister Andrew Holness. She says the program will prepare students to compete in an increasingly technology-driven world. The objective of the program is to develop skills such as logical and critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, teamwork, mathematics, and to instill confidence in students through coding. To support this, a coding slash computer applications class will be incorporated in the regular school curriculum. 
For his part, Prime Minister Holness says, as Jamaica seeks to become a digital society, the need for coders is increasing. Jamaica already has the building blocks to become the Silicon Valley of the region, such as proximity to the largest market in the world. We have creative, imaginative, and a young population. And we now need to turn this into an asset. We need the builders, the coders. They are the builders of the digital society. The launch follows a successful pilot program by the Education Ministry on May 7. It was executed through a partnership with software firm Amber Innovations Group Limited and was conducted virtually in 20 schools with approximately 2,000 students in grades 4 and 9. For this full rollout, telecommunications company Digicel has now partnered with the Amber Group to co-sponsor the program. Administrative staff at the Jamaica Bauxite Mining, JBM Limited, are now operating in a newly constructed building valued at approximately 120 million Jamaican dollars. The building, which is located at Reynolds Pier, was handed over last Friday by Mining Minister Robert Montague. It contains a conference room and seven offices, in addition to a CCTV monitoring room, a lobby for visitors, kitchenette, bathroom facility, stationary room, a sick bay, a 50 kVA standby generator, and a 188 square foot warehouse. An agreement was made between the Port Authority of Jamaica and the Jamaica Bauxite Mines Limited to relocate the JBM's administrative office to the western side of the property to accommodate the enlargement of the eastern side of the property, which is more on the shipping business. I firmly believe that facilities such as this new administrative building encourage better staff performance and overall well-being. Construction of the building was undertaken by the Port Authority of Jamaica, and the Reynolds Pier is used by both the Port Authority and the JBM for docking cargo vessels and cruise ships. And finally, portfolio responsibility for Clarendon Alumina Production Limited, CAP, is now under the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. Prime Minister Andrew Holness gave the directive for the entity's transfer from the Ministry of Transport and Mining. The decision follows calls for the government to provide financial support to CAP because of the separated nature of the Jamalka joint venture and unfavorable global market conditions. Prime Minister Holness says it is important that the transformation of Jamalco to a combined joint venture continues without disruption and that financial risks are eliminated. The Ministry of Finance has been providing finance and strategic guidance to the Jamalka Incorporation project and several milestones have already been achieved. The government currently holds 45% interest in the Jamalco refinery through CAP, while the Noble Group owns the other 55%. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.